So ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about sub-bass control at the mastering stage. So this video started a bit weird because you see me wearing a hoodie and that's because I'm sick and I feel cold. But you know, watching all of this cool gear and the things I have is what makes me feel a bit better. So watching this cool gear, everything and doing what I do makes me feel better. So never mind, let's jump in into how you can control sub-bass at the machine stage and what you can actually do to make sure your sub-bass translates very well. So first of all, we have a track that sounds like this. So this is the track I mastered for my client, but you'll be listening to the final mix to basically hear how it sounds. Yeah, very nice track, very chill vibe, and it has that strong sub bass I love working with. So the first thing we'll be doing is we'll be using an EQ, and this time I'm going to use Pro Q3 because I find myself using Pro Q3 more than Pro Q4. You may be asking why? I don't know. I have both of them. Pro Q3 works better for me personally. So the first thing I like to do when dealing with sub bass is I like switching to a linear phase and I like keeping this at high. Now we have to understand why treating sub bass is very sensitive. Sub bass frequencies are the frequencies that are very heavy. They respond very slowly and they are slow. So they are not like mid range and high frequencies. They move very slow. So the energy will be very hard to deal with and they are very sensitive. Now it's very easy to mess up the phase in the low end than on the mid and the highs. So this is why we want to make sure we work with the correct settings within the EQ and also within other processors. This time I'll show you some examples what you can do. So play my track in the background so we can see what's happening there. Now we have some frequencies here. Now here are the options you can do. You can decide to basically get rid of the sub frequencies, let's say below 20, 25 Hz. This is a very popular thing that people do a lot and I don't recommend it at in all cases. It can do the job and it looks something like this. So you can set it like this, you can switch to different modes, you can use different slopes, so this depends on you. This is the way you can do and this can make your track a bit cleaner, sounding a bit more upfront, but at the same time it can cost your track of that power or weight you have within the master. So this is just one way to treat the sub bass and it doesn't have to be the only way you have. The other way you have, you can use a shell filter. If for example you feel like the sub bass frequencies are a lot there. So you can use a shell filter that looks like this. You can change the Q value, you can determine how you want it to sound. So these are very basic approaches you can have. And when doing something like this, I recommend switching to this 6 dB scale so you have more precise view here. So this can be the issue. Maybe for example you want to amplify the sub bass like this or maybe your bass so it can look something like this you even have filters that look like let me just find them this tilt shell filter now when you move you'll see something like this you can change the q value you can create something like this which basically attenuates the low end and amplifies the high end but this is more of a creative choice we're talking about the sub bass now another thing you can use to treat your sub bass is you can use a dynamic filter so for example let's imagine we want to attenuate the low end so we can create a band right here switch to let's say low shelf like this and then you have this dynamic range here and then you can trigger attenuation in a more musical way here this helps to really keep the sub bass tight and you also can really balance out that energy using an EQ. This is very interesting thing you can do. You can for example switch this to mid so you're affecting on the mono information since you'll be finding the mono information more there and then you can go with another filter high pass filter in side mode so you basically prevent any of the side information from happening in the low end. This will help a lot and this is just another way you can do this. Now what are the things you can also do? So let's imagine you decide to high pass this specific range. I would suggest going for this mid and then you'll be noticing the loss of low end frequencies but you, if you for example still need this kind of cut to balance out the sub bass you can use a bell filter on top around where your bass is. So now you can basically make sure you have enough energy, you basically compensate for that energy loss and you create that perception of having that energy still there even though you don't have as much energy below the specific value where you use to cut. So this is 
an amazing thing you can also do. The same goes for amplification. Let's imagine you have a shell filter. You can also use a dynamic here to amplify this range. But this is something I don't really do at the machine stage because I don't like that sub bass being too much within the master. It happens, but not as often. So again, just another way you can treat your sub bass. And to basically help you with low end treatment, I also made different presets that you can also check out and see how I use different filters to shape my tracks. So for example, this one is very interesting. You have many, many, many of them that you can use to manipulate also the stereo field of the low end and also keep your sub bass and your basses and other signals very tight. So this is within my Pro-Q3 and Pro-Q4 pack. Now I'll cut my voice here and let you listen to how different adjustments regarding the sub bass sound on the track you heard at the beginning of this video. So this is just an introduction video into how you can actually treat your sub bass. Now EQ is only one option. There is an option with Pro MB that works way better and that you can combine with Pro Q3 and Pro Q4 and equalizers overall. There is an option with analog equalizers that also works wonderful. There are options with many different tools. So I'll be making more videos on how you can use each tool to control your sub bass. So the next video maybe with Pro MB and also other processors. Thank you for watching this video. I wanted to make a quick video on how to do this using an EQ. So I'm definitely down for your thoughts. Let me know what you think on, the, on this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and I'll hope to see you in another video.